common sense would tell you if you're sleeping on the street and you're sleeping in a doorway and you're freezing cold or you're living in fear, then your mental health is obviously going to de deteriorate pretty rapidly and you're probably going to turn to drugs or alcohol to try and escape that. What inspired your organisation, Social Bites? Well, it kind of happened by accident, really. Social Bites become quite well known now for our work with homeless people. Um, but when we first set it up, it didn't really have much to do with homelessness at all, to be honest. Uh, what happened was we opened up a little cafe, um, it was kind of a sandwich coffee shop in the city centre of Edinburgh. And we were in there making coffees and serving customers. And there was a young man who was uh, 19 years old, he was homeless. And he was selling the Big Issue magazine uh, on the street corner just outside the front door of the cafe. And after a couple of weeks of us being open, this young man, his name was Pete, he came in one day and he sort of plucked up the courage and he asked us if he could have a job. And we kind of thought, why not? It seemed like quite a nice thing to do. So we gave him a job in our kitchen um, and we just saw that he was working really hard and we saw the employment was quite transformative for him. And we thought we might try it again. And we asked him, Pete, do you know anybody else that's homeless that might want a job? And he said, well, my brother, Joe, uh, is also homeless. He also sells a big issue. So we said, OK, and we gave Joe a job. And then Joe was working hard. And we said, do you know anybody else, guys? And they said, well, there's a guy down the street called John. Maybe you could give him a try. And we said, all right, we gave him a job. And then I think at this point, they kind of realized we were basically soft touches as employers. And they could maybe recommend some of their other friends. And they recommended this guy called Colin. So that's kind of how it all got started. We got involved in this homeless issue by offering jobs in this cafe. Uh, to people and as we kind of got a bit more engaged in it we introduced this pay it forward system and um, so we didn't start to encourage customers to buy something extra and um, for someone that was homeless to get something for free later so customers started to buy extra sandwiches and extra coffees and before we'd realized that really we were feeding maybe 40 or 50 people every day in this little cafe and that's kind of how it all got started and what inspired it all yeah and what impact has social bite had on the homeless community well, it's kind of, it's grown exponentially. So we started with that one little cafe um, and we decided to try and open a bit of a chain of cafes. Um, so we thought we'd try and maybe give Starbucks a bit of a run for their money here, here in Scotland. Um, and we ended up opening five cafes across three cities. Um, and we made a policy that around a quarter of our workforce would be people that have been homeless. Um, and by this point, we were giving out quite a significant quantity of free food across uh, this chain of cafes. Um, but out with the kind of immediate locality of the shops, pretty much no one would have ever heard of us or known much about what we did. Um, but we got a bit of a profile boost, which really helped to propel like the scope of our work um, somewhat surreally in uh, to 2015, when as crazy as it sounds, I decided to write a letter to George Clooney um, and invite, I decided to invite George Clooney <coughs> to come to Edinburgh and come and visit our little cafe. Uh, yeah, and amazingly, in November 2015, uh, he did come and kind of popped into the cafe, it brought Edinburgh to a bit of a screeching halt. Uh, there was hundreds of women were like camping outside the cafes from like six in the morning just to catch a glimpse of him. And I went into the news agents the next day and um, suddenly Social Bite was on the front page of every single national newspaper in the whole of the United Kingdom. It was on the news at six. Um, so suddenly our tiny little charity had quite a big profile and we thought we could maybe use that profile to develop some much more ambitious projects and programs to tackle the issue. Um, and that's led us to, to embark on a whole range of things. One of the projects we developed was a project called the Social Bite Village, um, where we took on some vacant land that was owned by Edinburgh Council and we built a small village. So we put into production 11 two bedroom prefabricated houses and a big community hub. Um, for 20 homeless people at any one time to come and live and find their feet. So that's a, a project we're, we're really proud of. And that's so far helped around 45 people into housing through that, that project. What more must be done to tackle the homelessness crisis in the UK? Well, the, the big thing that we've sort of advocated for is a, a policy that's, that's known as housing first. Um, so basically what that means is that the way that the UK currently responds to homelessness, kind of the status quo, is that if someone finds themselves becoming homeless and they're sleeping on the streets and, you know, obviously we, all of us walk past people every day in, in most cities in that situation, then we ask these people to, to prove that they're what's known as tenancy ready um, before they end up 
being able to get get their own place, their own flat, or their own house. And um, so we're asking them to kind of say, well, you need to show us that you're on top of any mental health issues, on top of any addiction issues. Maybe you need to show us that you're able to get a job. And if you're able to clear all these hurdles, then, you know, you can have a house. So we kind of make people try and show themselves to, to be up here. But common sense would tell you if you're sleeping on the street and you're sleeping in a doorway and you're freezing cold or you, you, you're living in fear, then your mental health is obviously going to deteriorate pretty rapidly and you're probably going to turn to drugs or alcohol to try and escape that and certainly you're going to be 100 miles away from trying to get a job so it's a very broken system at the moment where we're asking people to show themselves to be up here but in reality they're living in a situation that sends them down here so what housing first uh, proposes is that the first thing that we need to do to help someone that, that's homeless is to find them a home and that shouldn't be the last thing that should be the first thing and only from that stable a place of a home can they possibly start to solve mental health challenges and addiction challenges and uh, reintegrate into society so one of the things that we developed in Scotland was a big housing first program um, where we've helped around it's almost 600 rough sleepers people that were on the street for a long time into their own permanent flat uh, and, and we've helped to fund a wraparound support to give them the support they need to sustain that so that's very much a pilot that we think should be rolled out um, you know, in, in a significant way throughout the UK. And I think that's the key way that we can really address the rough sleeping problem and, and help get people off the streets because the current system's, you know, definitely very broken.